Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to set a static IP address for the SP32 on a local network. As target port I'm going to be using a Fire Beetle board from DFRobot. So, uh, if you have experience uh, connecting your SP32 to your own Wi-Fi network, probably you have already noticed that in some cases uh, it might not get always the same local IP address. Uh, although there are other techniques to avoid having to know the IP address of the SP32 in order to reach it, um, it's in some cases it might be useful to assign a static IP address in case we want to reach it uh, by that particular IP address. So in this tutorial we are going to cover a way of set a fixed IP address. Uh, but before we jump into that, uh, we need to understand that when we are connecting the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network using, I would say, the standard method of just passing uh, the network name and the network password and getting um, an IP address assigned by our router, in fact, what is happening is it is using the DHCP protocol under the hood, so the SP32 is acting as a DHCP client, and your home router, assuming that you are working in a home network, typically is the, the agent that does the, the role of a DHCP server, it is assigning not only the IP address to your SP32, but also some additional network parameters, such as the gateway IP address, the, the main DNS server, uh, or the subnet mask, and basically those parameters are necessary for uh, your SP32 to be able to uh, not only connect to the network, but also reach other devices on the network, send uh, data to outside the network, to the internet, uh, for example, contacting a remote uh, remote site or a remote endpoint, uh, doing the address resolution, etc. So, uh, what happens is when we go, when we call the function that is available on Arduino Core to set a static IP address, under the hood, what means it is that DHCP will no longer be used, thus we need to provide all the other parameters that I've mentioned. And if we fail to do it properly for our uh, setup, it might seem that, okay, it connects correctly to the Wi-Fi network and it gets uh, the IP address, the static one we assigned to the SP32, but then some features may not work correctly. So what we are going to do in this first stage is basically see um, a code, a very simple Arduino sketch, that will allow us to connect to uh, the Wi-Fi network and then print not only the local IP address assigned, in this case using the DHCP, but only but also uh, the additional parameters. Since the only thing we want to then in other sketch to fix is the static IP address, uh, we can reuse the other parameters that we know are correctly configured for our network uh, because on this snippet, in the first snippet, we are going to analyze they were obtained using the HTTP, so they should be correct for our network. Then we can use and feed them to the other script and just vary the, the IP address. So to get started, First thing, including the Wi-Fi.edge library, as usual, this will make available the Wi-Fi extern variable that we can use um, in other, uh, amongst other things to connect to the Wi-Fi network and as we are going to see here, also to obtain all the other parameters um, of the network configuration. Uh, after that, we need to declare here, uh, obviously you could pass them in line, but I usually declare them here, uh, the credentials of the um, Wi-Fi network, namely the SSID, uh, which is basically the network name and the network password. Naturally, you need to replace these placeholders by the credentials that apply to your network. Moving on to the Arduino setup, we'll start by opening a serial connection so we can output uh, the results of our program. Then we are going to call the begin method on the Wi-Fi extern variable, uh, passing as first input the SSID and as second input the password. So this will start under the hood, so it will start connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Uh, since when this returns, it doesn't mean that we are already connected to Wi-Fi network. We can either rely for a more, um, let's say, sophisticated approach, we can um, rely on um, Wi-Fi events. But I would say that for the simpler use cases where the rest of our program doesn't make sense if we are not connected uh, to the Wi-Fi network, it's okay to pull here the network status with a call to this status method on the Wi-Fi extern variable. And we know that we are connected to the Wi-Fi network when this returns a constant, the uh, edge I'll connected uh, until this, this value is returned, we know that we are still in the process of connecting, so we'll loop here and delay here. Just as a note, again, this is a, a, a simple polling. We can argue with using the, the um, Wi-Fi events, which is 
a bit more complex to, to manage if it makes sense for simpler use cases such as this. Personally, I think it's easier to stick with the polling if we are not doing anything until the connection is done. But again, it's, it's uh, discussable if this is the best approach or not. Uh, moving on, assuming that after this point we are already connected to the Wi-Fi network, the next thing we'll do is printing the parameters of our connection. The first one will be the local IP address uh, that was assigned to my SP32 on this network. Naturally, this is just for illustration purposes because in the other sketch, in the other Darwin sketch, we are going to set up a custom value, uh, a static value that we are going to provide, but I'm just going to print it here with a call to this local IP method. Then to get the subnet mask, we need to call this method. Subnet mask is kind of self-explanatory and this will return the subnet mask for our network. Then we have this uh, parameter here, the gateway IP, that basically is the IP address of the gateway of our network, which is in essence the device that is doing the connection between the, that network and the outside. In a typical home network, we are talking about a router, where the router does a connection between our home network, our internal and local network, and the outside, which is the, the internet. So this should contain that IP address. Then. As you know, when we uh, contact, for example, Google, let's say, um, actually under the hood, uh, that name is translated in the IP address and it's what the machines use to communicate amongst themselves. So basically this, IP, this name needs to be translated into an IP address using domain name resolution. And thus we need a server, a domain name server, that we need to contact when we want to do this resolution. So basically this DNS IP method allows us to get um, the DNS server, the IP address of the DNS server that the SP32 will contact in order to do that resolution. So take in consideration that typically two uh, IPs are assigned, it's the main uh, server, the main DNS server and the backup DNS server, and this method return, uh, receives here as parameter and integer, that allows, if it's zero, to get the IP address of the main DNS server, if it is one of the backup DNS server. As we'll see in a minute, it will be the same in my network, but it might be different uh, for your network. Then in the main loop, we don't need to do anything since we're just printing these parameters. So I've already uploaded this um, code to my SP32 and run it. Uh, I have two SP32s connected uh, at this stage to my computer, but basically this first one uh, contains this code Code. As you can see here, uh, it got after connecting, it got an IP address assigned. This is the subnet mask of my network, uh, the gateway IP address. Typically, uh, it's on uh, 254, uh, it's a common IP address for the gateway, but again, this may vary from network uh, to network. And then, as I have said before, this is the IP address of the DNS server, the main one and the backup. It's the same for my network, uh, but it might vary in your case. So basically what I did, and probably will do the same when testing this code, is copying the values of these IP addresses here, because these are the parameters that we'll need to provide to, to the initialization function, to the configuration function that will allow us to set a static um, IP address. Uh, and this one, as I've said before, we are going to provide a custom one so we don't need to copy. But these ones you should copy and use on the other uh, program. So moving on here to the, others, uh, to the other sketch, uh, in essence what we are going to do, just as a very simple uh, exemplification, we are going to set a custom, uh, a static IP address to our SP32. Naturally we need to provide the other parameters that I've mentioned and after that, just as a um, just to, to as an exemplification, we are going to try to ping a host outside the outside the, the network. Um, it's basically to be Google to see if our SP32 can correctly do the domain name um, resolution into IP address and do a request to that uh, to that endpoint. This should give us uh, indication that everything was configured correctly. Okay, so starting with the code, the first thing we need to do, like before, is including the Wi-Fi.edge library. And in this case, for being able to do the ping, I've written a tutorial uh, on this. I can, I can leave in the description the link for a more detailed explanation on, on how we can ping a host from the SP32. But in essence, we need to include this SP32 ping.edge library um, in order for us to be able to send the ping to a remote host. 
then like before the network credentials you should replace here by your uh, network name and network password and from this point onward we are going to start um, defining here some variables that will contain the addresses of our network parameters. Note that we are going to create objects of this class, IP address, which is basically which are basically the classes uh, that the configuration method receives. So the first one will be the static IP address that we want to assign to our ASP32. As you can see here, it's different from the one that I got before. Keep in mind that you should assign a static IP address on your local network that is not already taken. Uh, I'm using here this one. I know that this one is not taken on my uh, local network. Then here I'm defining a variable to hold the IP address uh, of the gateway in my network. It was uh, copied from the previous uh, from the previous code and pasted here. The subnet also same thing. And here I'm just defining a variable to hold uh, the IP address of the DNS server because, as I've said before, it's the same the, the main and the backup. In your case, if it is different, you uh, should probably declare two different variables to hold uh, the IP address of the main and of the backup uh, uh, domain name server. So moving on to the Arduino setup, like before calling the begin method so we can output the results of our program then in this case before we try to connect to the network we need to call this config method on our wi-fi extern variable and pass as first input the static ip address uh, that we want to assign to our sp32 a second input the gateway uh, ip address as third the subnet uh, the subnet mask and as fourth and fifth we should pass the IP address of the main and secondary DNS servers. Since this method call returns false in case something goes wrong, I'm printing here a configuration failed message just for the user to know that something failed. Uh, in your case, you can either return or keep the code, so it doesn't matter much because we are just here testing, but obviously for a um, real application scenario, probably here the error rendering will be a little bit more complex writing to some sort of log or something like that. Here I'm just printing a message um, to the console saying that the configuration failed. So assuming everything goes fine, from this point on we should have already um, configured these uh, network parameters, but keep in mind, like I've said before, in this case our SP32 won't be using DHCP to get uh, uh, the network parameters, so we are basically relying on passing these ones, uh, these network parameters correctly to the config method. From this point onward, we will do the same for connection, for connecting to the Wi-Fi network, calling the begin method, passing as first input the network name and as second the password, pulling pulling here while until the connection is successfully established um, to the network, and then just as an exemplification, we are going to print back. Um, the, um, the network configuration parameters and in this particular case we should look into the IP address to see if what we got in the um, what we got in the um, serial monitor matches this one and then so basically just to recap this is these are exactly the same methods we have called in the previous snippet of code and then basically we are going to ping uh, Google so we call this ping uh, method on this ping object here passing as first input um, the URL of the, um, the, um, the endpoint that we want to ping and a second optional parameter we pass the number of pings that we want to do uh, by default it's five here I'm passing the value three so we are pinging uh, Google three times as output uh, this method returns a boolean indicating if the ping was successful or not then we are just checking if that uh, procedure went fine or not and printing here a message uh, to the user indicating if the ping failed or if the ping was successful naturally we expect it to be successful in case we have configured everything right note that here we are going to be uh, reaching a host outside of our network, which means that uh, our configuration should be fine, not only the domain name resolution, also uh, the gateway, so we are able to reach these hosts outside our network. Again, the main loop can be left empty since it really doesn't matter, we are not doing anything there. Again, I've already uploaded this code to my SP32. Uh, like before, I'm just resetting it, and as you can see here, uh, it quickly, really quickly connected to the Wi-Fi network. As you can see here, I've received the, exactly the IP address, the static one that I've uh, requested, that I've configured. Uh, then all the parameters, all the additional parameters that are being printed matches the, the, match the one that um, I've shown before in the previous 
uh, sketch. This is what is expected because we also uh, set this manually. And to finalize, as we can see here, we got a successful ping to Google, uh, which means um, that at least this basic functionality of being able to reach a host outside the network and do the domain name resolution uh, should be working fine. That's it. Hope this video was useful. Uh, very simple to set a static IP address. Um, if you have enjoyed, please subscribe my channel. Additionally, I also have a blog where I write a lot uh, about the SP32, SP8266 and general programming. Um, some topics I have not yet been able to cover here in videos. So please feel free to, to reach, to explore my blog uh, and hope you enjoy it as well. Thank you very much for watching.